Hello and welcome to this Broadcom course. The course explores the process of installing atomic automation in detail. We have dedicated videos for each step in the sequence. They include operating system requirements, each component and their subparts, and basic post-installation configuration. We've made a point of presenting this information in a mix and match Linux and Windows environments to match the reality of our customers. By the end of this course, you will be able to perform a basic installation. You'll understand the role of every component and how they interact with one another. We give special attention to the points of integration like configuration files and connection settings. We execute the installation in a certain sequence. When you complete the course, you'll understand why. We avoid delving too deep into the specific complexities of each component. They all have dedicated courseware available in our catalog. We have complete training programs for TLS, the automation engine processes, utilities, and more. We encourage you to use them after you've completed this course. Atomic Automation relies on a conventional tiered architecture. Let's discuss the components first. Later, we'll explain how they fit together and where using a standard configuration. The first component we install is the database, which stores Atomic's data artifacts. Next, we deploy the TLS infrastructure. Except for the database, which comes with its own security mechanisms, TLS is needed to secure communications between the components. It relies on two sets of tools. Some parts require a conventional certificate containing a public key. Others are secured with a tool called CAPKI. The third component is the automation engine, or AE. AE is the core processing component of the solution. It handles scheduling, orchestration, automation, and execution. It's secured with conventional TLS. Every component in the infrastructure is treated as a service, which can be controlled interactively. We deploy a service manager to manage these services. Service manager is secured with CAPKI. Next, we install the Atomic Web Interface, or AWI, which is the web-based user interface. Each host and application where processes take place requires an agent. We'll install Windows and Linux agents. Agents share files. For this, we have dedicated executable objects called file transfers. In certain cases, some agents are secured with TLS, while others aren't. Atomic needs a specific solution to translate file transfers between TLS and non-TLS agents. It's called a TLS gateway. This installs and is configured just like an agent's. When the instance is ready, we install Analytics, which is Atomic's unified dashboarding solution. We start with four baseline systems. Three are CentOS 7, Linux systems, and one is Windows. One of the Linux systems is assigned to the database. This is standard practice for most of our customers. The database stores data artifacts for objects, production data, and history. Supported packages include Oracle, DB2, PostgreSQL, as well as SQL Server for Windows. In the case of SQL Server, we also need a native Windows ODBC connection for access. In this course, we use PostgreSQL since it's open source and supported on Linux. Then we install the database utilities. Their role is to manage the database and execute a variety of associated operations like reorg, archive, and more. They include the DB load tool, which we use to load the initial atomic data structures in PostgreSQL. Next, we deploy security on the Linux system assigned to the automation engine. First, we create the TLS infrastructure for the automation engine. For the sake of simplicity, we use self-signed certificates, although this is not appropriate for production environments, since it leaves security matters in the hands of operations managers. For production, you need an internal certificate authority at a minimum. We have a dedicated version 21 TLS training program, and we encourage you to take it. We create self-signed certificates. We use a cross-platform tool called Keystore Manager, generate a key store which contains the public-private key pair, and deploy it to the automation engine host. The system will also host a service manager, and so we need CAPKI. Service manager is covered in a dedicated video, but for the time being, remember that it's a network component that has clients. As such, those communications need to be secured with CAPKI. Next, we install the automation engine, which is a set of communication and workload processes and is the centerpiece of the solution. AE supports automation, batch execution, scheduling, synchronization, and orchestration functions. The workload process handles workload tasks, the communication process, connection, and communication tasks. The Java communication process is the main point of entry for TLS components, 
and the Java workload process handles a variety of tasks related to monitoring and object searches. The REST process handles REST API requests. The engine connects to the database using both ODBC and JDBC. Together, the database and the engine form the technical core of Atomic Automation. We install a Service Manager instance on the AE host so it can control AE processes. It's a simple mechanism that stops and starts the processes in their respective file systems, providing interactive control of services and auto start. Service managers are purely local, but they are networked. The service manager comes with its own user interface, the service manager dialog. It's Windows only, but it can connect to any other service manager in the infrastructure and remote access the services locally. On the third Linux host, we install the Atomic Web Interface or AWI. This is the standard user interface. It can either be installed in a web application server or as a self-contained embedded Jetty server. We use the first option. We install Tomcat and deploy AWI. AWI connects to the automation engine and requires the public key certificate for security. The purpose of Atomic is to provide automation services for hosts and applications. For this, we need local agents on every host where those services are needed. We install the Windows agents on the Windows host. We also install a Unix agent on the AWI host. While this isn't exactly standard practice, it means we don't have a brand new Linux system. Agents connect to the automation engine. Some agents, like the Java-based applications, Windows, and Unix OS agents, communicate with AE over TLS, and so they'll require public key certificates. Other agents like VMS and AS400 are not TLS enabled, and so they don't require the TLS certificate. This being said, we need an additional component called TLS Gateway, which we'll install on the Windows system. This provides translation services between TLS and non-TLS agents. TLS Gateway is a Java component and requires a public key certificate, which should already be there. At this point, Atomic Automation is working. We install and configure Analytics and its dedicated PostgreSQL database on the Windows host. Analytics is a powerful reporting solution. The technical aspects of Analytics are somewhat trickier as the installation has many moving parts and three connection points to the database, the automation engine, and AWI. Analytics also requires the TLS certificate and public key to connect to the automation engine. To install Atomic Automation, you download the latest installation package from our Download Center. Our recommendation is to install everything in a dedicated file system on every host, say slash opt slash atomic or c colon back slash atomic. The installation package will be unzipped. As we deploy each component, they will be individually installed, and you will see directories created under the base instance directory.